Anyway, let's uh, get back to what we were doing. The current EG to music, we spent quite a lot of time on it, but without much progress, it was um, generating something, it was generating noise, uh, it wasn't very musical. So I thought we'll give it a go this time. We'll start from, not from scratch as previously. So previously we did learn quite a bit about music generation, MIDI, um, music uh, fonts, things like that. You can see previous uh, videos. The idea here is take an existing tool. This is already on the website. You can go try this um, out. Right, this is the coordinates. The function x4 parameters, low cut, high cut, assembly frequency and order. That's order 5 by default. The function first calculate the Nyquist frequency, which is half of the sampling frequencies. It then normalizes the local and high frequencies by dividing them into Nyquist frequency. The butter function from side by signal module is then used to calculate the coefficients of the Butterworth filter. We get the coefficients in uh, A and B and the uh, next function butter bandpass filter is actually using those coefficients. Yeah, it has the same inputs, then it's uh, actually generating B and A and using uh, L filter, one dimension IAR or FIR. Which one is it by default? Sure, this will be parameters B array, array like. Okay, it's not actually telling us which one is it. Is it IAR or FIR? I'm sure it's IAR. That's just a guess. Yeah, so GPT-4 has a better, more generic an explanation is better for our purposes. Filter that is returned. Yeah, it didn't actually explain the whole code, did it? It's good GPT-4 says it's a good script considering it wrote it itself. The whole spectrum. We have the Delta, Theta, Alpha, Beta. Seem to work okay. So this is during seizure. It's actually an error. Error at the edge there and this is during non-seizure that, that has that weird thing in it yeah this is the um, end of the seizure so this seizure this no seizure yeah it's a tricky business because the spectrum is actually similar but it's similar because of different reasons you have to look at the power in it so yes we want to improve this tool but we also want to generate music out of it. So we don't have to review EEG manually like this. So we can just hit the play button and listen to it. Hopefully it's not too annoying to listen to. We need to write a prompt for it. This tool is working well. It's fast and responsive. We would like to add an option to play musical notes when we are scrolling through the file the notes could be retrieved out of the power in each frequency component and potentially played as chords so multiple notes together it says integrating a feature to play musical notes based on the power of frequency components in each data yeah okay this would turn the data into auditory experience blah 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 Yes, high level data mapping, frequency to node mapping, okay, and scaling, and yeah, the power of each frequency could control the volume or dynamics of the corresponding node, node, chord generation, based on selected frequencies from chords, this can be done by grouping nodes that harmonize well together, well, that's uh, there's a help from a musician here, implement logic to decide how chords change over time, time audio synthesis yeah i want to play it back in the well using an uh, audio api to play the chords integrating with existing application and the play button no using a play button yeah we don't want to do that yeah question is do we just want to play frequencies or actually musical notes which we tried doing previously so in the code we already should have the power for each EEG frequency component delta, theta, alpha, beta when scrolling through the file. Can we use this to generate musical notes? 
it's kind of the same thing again, but it's not actually doing it. So if we assign a specific note or a range of note to each EG frequency band, does it mean that we will only have four notes? So we actually started generating a JavaScript using Web Audio API. Yeah, this one's using sinusoids. Should we do this in front end or back end? Mainly or both at this stage because we obviously running the server for other things as well. I do want to do as much as possible on the front end. So yes, the performance will highly depend on uh, the device you are using to access the web application. Yeah, probably go for some sort of hybrid, uh, well, obviously for a hybrid approach. Question is, uh, what's the ratio between uh, back end and front end processing? Question when we normalize, it's uh, normalizing within the certain window. So the time window there is important. Replacing all this map data to nodes. We're having errors. So we have in JavaScript uh, a line 142. Currently, cheat that. Uh, it to replace this with the data value as the data value. I have a feeling this should be happening elsewhere. I can GPT or help with this second uh, the current second, so it's a pointer. Fetch data and render probably should split this function existing code fetch plot data. Then when we have fetch API URL response json that uh, that's the code for plotting the signal we have a constant of uh, notes to play yes we already have play frequency and map eg data to notes keep adding more and more functions extract each data for music and the main one is fetch data and render which we are replacing the audio context was not allowed to start and another function is not defined but 69 note range we have note range we forgot a function right this is actually similar to what we had in the previous code yeah, i have a feeling we need to change the backend as well we have power to note let's just uh, warning it's not an actual error and that's fine it's the info audio context was not allowed to start is that why we can't hear anything the javascript one to nine yeah the webcat may not exist okay i actually don't want the button because i'm getting this error which doesn't seem to be related to the button i want an extra button we don't particularly care about TypeScript, that error is okay, but the browser is not playing anything at the moment. We also do not want to add an additional button. It is not needed. Can we make sure the sound is played when the scroller is moved? This page, maybe to take the risk of annoying the user. So we have audio context initialize false, initialize audio context, then in play frequency. That's no problem, isn't it? Can get rid of that. Yeah, let's use that. That should initialize the audio context and in the scroll event, fetch and render. Yeah, we don't need all that. <laughs> it keeps adding <laughs> more functions. It's ridiculous. Uh, it was like, uh, we already have that. Like policies preventing us from playing in the browser. Every time I ask for something, it's generating a new function, which is not great. Yeah, I will try fixing this next time. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.